Nobody is running away from Donald Trump at this point. With some of the former president's potential competitors for the Republican nomination making clear moves toward the race, one of the early defining questions of the 2024 presidential election appears to be about to be answered. According to a source familiar with her plans, former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley is anticipated to officially launch her campaign on February 15 in Charleston. Former Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is making the political throat-clearing noises that prospective candidates are known for, while promoting a new book on the conservative media circuit that settles some old grudges. Sen. Tim Scott of South Carolina is also embarking on a listening tour with a religious focus. His home state of Iowa and the first two stops just so happen to be the cornerstones of early voting for the GOP primary race early the following year. This sudden uptick in activity comes after Trump's initial two-state campaign swing last weekend, during which he attacked another potential rival, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, whom he accused of betraying the party by considering a run for office. The rising Republican star responded with a subtly worded jab, pointing out that, unlike you know who, he had won re-election. One year before the only real test of political viability voting takes place, Trump is still the only declared Republican candidate. However, the Republican primary's early developments are crucial because they will influence what is already expected to be a contentious campaign. Given the prevalence of election denialism among the GOP's grassroots, this election may also be a test of US democracy. The fact that there are increasingly obvious signs of multiple campaigns forming is noteworthy, because it suggests that Trump, who has been the GOP's most powerful figure since 2016, is not invincibly powerful and could face real competition. Given the former president's incredibly strong ties with conservative activists who control primaries, it would be exaggerated to claim that his opponent sense his weakness. In an interview with Hugh Hewitt on Thursday, former Maryland Governor Larry Hogan, a moderate Republican who is far from a Trump acolyte and himself considering a 2024 run, said under pressure that he would back Trump if he were the party's nominee. However, Trump's lackluster fundraising efforts to date, his lackluster campaign debut last year, and his sparse campaign appearances highlight his electoral liabilities, particularly in light of his frequently disastrous midterm interventions. Even so, Trump would benefit from having several opponents, as it did in 2016, as most Republican primaries are winner-take-all, allowing a candidate with a slim majority of votes to gain ground. To put it another way, Trump can win the primary if he can divide the opposition, but that doesn't mean he will win the general election, given that the twice-impeached former president left Washington in disgrace after attempting to steal an election and inciting a mob attack on the U.S. Capitol. As Republicans consider how to broaden their coalition following their loss in the general election in 2020, Haley's anticipated campaign launch will highlight a political persona with considerable appeal. Haley has an advantage because she was previously the governor of a southern state that may end up being one of the most crucial primary contests, and because her career has long been geared toward a run for president. She would be the first woman to hold the office, which would be historic, and her South Asian heritage might help the GOP regain the support of women and more moderate voters. She gained some expertise in foreign affairs during her tenure as the U.S. ambassador to the U.N. under Trump. She managed a smooth exit from the Trump administration on her own terms, unlike many of his cabinet members. Even at the time, her photo op farewell meeting with Trump in the Oval Office appeared to be potential campaign footage for the Republican primary. Haley is not being subtle in her argument, which might allow her to subtly suggest that it's time to move past the former president and current president Joe Biden without directly criticizing the Trump administration and his supporters. A new generation is needed now. There needs to be more leadership. In a recent interview with Fox News, Haley said, We have to keep in mind that we have lost the last seven out of the last eight popular votes for president. We need a Republican who can lead and win a general election, the speaker said. I don't think you have to be 80 to be a leader in D.C., she continued. The most important question Haley will have to answer is whether the Republican base, which has rewarded election skeptics, make America great again extremists, and culture warriors, is even remotely interested in what she intends to sell. When compared to the principles of the party whose nomination she is vying for, her credentials, while impressive on their own, are less impressive. Is there really a demand within the GOP for a more inclusive, diverse, and subdued vehicle to deliver Trump's America First in it? After all, the ex-bombast, president's infrequent profanity, and laceration of liberal government and media elites create more of an emotional connection with his biggest fans than a direct ideological one. Haley undoubtedly has advantages over Trump in a general election, but she must first defeat him. Haley is susceptible to counterattacks from the former president, focusing on her ambition because of her struggles to reconcile her past relationships with Trump and his more irrational anti-democratic outbursts. She criticized her party for supporting Trump down a path he shouldn't have taken with his election denialism that resulted in the January 6, 2021 uprising, for example, after they parted ways amicably. But she changed her position in October 2021 because Trump was still a significant figure in the GOP. 
the Republican Party needs him. In an interview with the Wall Street Journal, Haley stated, I don't want us to go back to the days before Trump. Trump is already zeroing in on Haley's concessions after claiming over the weekend that he had instructed her to do it when she had called. He posted a video of Haley declaring on Wednesday that she wouldn't run for office in 2021 on his Truth Social Network. Some observers are unsure of the exact strategy the former governor of South Carolina will use to garner a large enough support base to propel her to the GOP nomination. I believe that this race only has room for three candidates. The more anti-Trumper not an ever-Trumper, the trump light, where Ron DeSantis, Nikki Haley, and then Trump himself are is what Adam Kinzinger, a former Republican congressman from Illinois, said. Kinzinger is now a senior political commentator for CNN. Nikki Haley's struggle will be that she has been both pro and anti-Trump, declared she wouldn't run if he did, and now he is going to run. She currently lacks a strong natural constituency. We'll see how she does because she's a smart woman. Pompeo is considering a campaign Republicans other than Haley are also indicating that they are prepared to take on Trump. Pompeo is making general allusions to a possible 2024 campaign. I visited New Hampshire and Iowa. At a Wednesday forum in Washington, D.C., he declared, this is not random. We're simply attempting to navigate this. Declaring that you think you ought to be the president of the United States of America is an incredibly important decision, he continued. Since he served as the former president's effective enforcer at the State Department and well director of the CIA, and shared many of his populist nationalist foreign policy instincts, Pompeo seems to have an even more serious positioning problem than Haley. Trump may be able to offer GOP primary voters almost everything Pompeo could, despite the fact that the West Point alum and former Kansas congressman is not a likely candidate. But Pompeo faces the same issue as Haley, Scott, Mike Pence, more fringe candidates, and even DeSantis, if he enters the race. Although they may not be afraid of Trump, that does not mean they can defeat him.